Hello, everybody, and welcome back into another episode of the Hockey Writers Roundtable Season Preview Edition. And we're rolling through the NHL teams here, and we're on to the Ottawa Senators. And these are familiar faces. We had a roundtable not that long ago. Paul Quinney, Jacob Billington. First of all, Paul, how's it going since I last saw you? Uh, how's it been? I could complain, like things about my golf game, for example, but... <laughs> It's hopeless, so I, I, I won't burden anybody with my complaints. But other than that, pretty good, pretty All good. Right, so, and awesome. And Jacob, how's it going? Good, good. It's been a been a busy week. I've been out of town working and got a new roof this week, and it's been a good week. Lots of good <laughs> things happening. Awesome. Well, I, as we're recording this, we we're still quite a bit away from the regular season, but you could be watching this uh, a day before the regular season starts. Who knows? But uh, we're going to get going to the Ottawa Senators season preview. And, uh, you know, the Senators didn't make the playoffs again this past season, but uh, made a push. They were actually pretty good towards the end of the season and ended up making it interesting. And everyone was kind of thinking, maybe they will do it. Didn't happen. And uh, and then went into the offseason with some uncertainty uh, and ended up being the Alex DeBrincat getting traded away um to the Detroit Red Wings and uh they're getting you know got back Kubalik a few other guy a few other pieces of prospects of Rango as well um but yeah some changes up front and uh defense pretty much stayed the same but uh, they did add some some new bodies so let's get started with our forward group and talking about a couple of the new faces first of all we did talk about this guy but let's go through him again Vladimir Tarasenko was added in free agency not that long ago as we record this, but uh, he's a big piece. So we'll start with you, Paul. Uh, what do you think Tarasenko is going to bring to this lineup? I know we were talking about him being on the top line. You still believe that is the best place? And how much of an impact is he going to make on this team? Well, if I were coaching the Sens, sure. That's where I'd put him is on the first line, right? Because we want yeah. a quick uh, But look, um, the burning question here is, is Tarasenko the real deal? Yeah. Uh, and I know that's not popular to say because uh, people are excited in Ottawa about Tarasenko, but, you know, there's been a lot of hype and, um, you know, I'm not disputing that he's, he's not a pure goal scorer, uh, but if you look at his track record, right. And that's all we can go on. Uh, if he plays a full season, he notches North of 30 goals, uh, you know, 75 points. That's when he's at his best. But look, last year in New York, he was 18 goals. He, yeah. he was not impressive. So, you know, if I'm DJ or if I'm uh, Pierre Dorian, that, that's going to be nagging on me. You know, uh, he's he's got to do better than 18 goals. Yeah, for sure. And, and I think he's probably, you know, to make a biggest impact, I think 25, uh, 30 goals, even better. Uh, but at least into that, uh, you know, closer to 30 rather than 20. I, I do agree with that. All right, Jacob, let's move on to another new face, Dominic Kubalik. Uh, he's the guy that they, one of the guys they got in that uh, Debrinkat trade. Um, what is he going to bring? Is he going to be a big impact or more just depth for the rest of the lineup here? Well, I think both. A, a depth and a big impact is something that Ottawa needs. They struggled yeah. to get depth scoring last year. And if he can score 20 goals on the third line, like he's done each of the last three years, then that's perfect. That's exactly what Ottawa needs. Um, what they struggled a lot with last year was they weren't getting the scoring from the bottom six. And if Shane Pinto, who scored 20 goals, assuming Ottawa gets him signed, um, that's two 20 goal scorers on your third line and probably Ridley Gregg on the other side, mm. um, or even Yuri Smikow. So who knows what that line's going to look like, but we definitely need Kubelik to score that 20 goals. Yeah, for sure. I, I think especially he's going to, he probably will be playing on that third line um, unless he like really impresses people and take, take some of the, I don't think that's happening because he's got Drake Batherson, Claude Giroux, uh, Josh Norris on that second line. I don't think he's getting in there or even in the, definitely not the top line. I, uh, all right, back over to you, Paul. I, uh, you know, Jacob just mentioned him, Yuri Smikal. I What do you think he's going to bring? I mean, he is a new face as well, uh, coming over from Europe. Does he make an impact, or is he going to be a guy that's just going to be end up being in the AHL or scratched a lot of the time? Yeah, I think he's got. So, so I'm looking at that fourth line and the projection that you know, in fact, I've made and other pundits have made is that you're going to see 
Kostelik at center, uh, Parker Kelly, and then um, Zach McEwen mm. uh, on, on wings. So that's that's an awful <laughs> lot. I have to tell you. I mean, I think, you know, they can do better. And Yuri's probably a guy you could put in there. Uh, he'll bring the grit and size, the physicality that I think McEwen can. Mm. And then you got to give some other guys a, a shot at knocking off uh, Parker Kelly and Kostelik. Yeah. So, yeah. I, so I'm, I'm kind of worried about the fourth line. Uh, burning questions, you know, not to digress too much, but uh, Norris is back. Okay. Yeah. Is he going to make a full recovery? Don't know. Mm. He's been out for a year. And, uh, you know, I predicted he's he was going to score 45 goals. Mm. Maybe <laughs> that was gosh, right? Yeah. Uh, he is coming back. Hasn't played in a year. So those would be kind of my burning questions on the offense. For sure. Jacob, you have any other burning questions in this offensive group? Uh, that fourth line is an interesting one. Uh, Zach McEwen, another new face coming in that, uh, won't really move the needle offensively, but he is a very physical uh, forward can score. I mean, he does have a ability to score a bit, but you're not expecting it. Uh, what do you think? Uh, any other questions you got in this group? Well, I think it's going to boil down to how much of a jump can Tim Stutzel take? He finished last year with 90 points. Can he take an even bigger jump this year? We'll see. Can he crack a hundred points? It's definitely possible. 40 goals, 100 points. That's yeah. that's a completely realistic. It's not reaching. Uh, but I also look at, again, Smeagol and who he's going to push out of the lineup. Yeah. So is Ridley Gregg going to start in the NHL? I don't think so. I think he starts in the AHL. And that gives a third line spot for Smeagol or uh, Sokolov if he earns it, if he mm -hmm. gets signed. Um, Angus Cruikshank is work, could work his way into the lineup. There's a lot of questions about the bottom six, even though it got a little bit more solidified. Um, and even Boko Imama, he could mm. make an impact at the NHL. He could even challenge McEwen for that spot. So who knows? Uh, there's a lot of positions up for grab, a lot of players who can who can jump into those spots. Hey, you know, before we leave the offense, Matthew, I think yeah. one thing that uh, and it hasn't been talked about very much, but um, you got to sign Sokolov and you got to sign uh, Pinto. And yeah. there's hundred and ninety thousand dollars in change in cap space so you don't have it so what's going to happen there the speculation is that um uh, matthew joseph is uh is leaving town mm -hmm. so you know at some point this summer that issue's got to be resolved because you can't sign uh sokolov or or uh, mm -hmm. pinto unless you do yeah. something yeah so. there there's a storyline we'll be watching throughout who knows uh, this could be resolved by the time you're watching this but uh, uh it it is something that's going to be lingering throughout training camp if it still is something that's around i think they want to get pinto signed before that they don't want usually don't like rfas being sitting around not especially a, a young guy like that you you want him in training camp you don't want to be be sitting around away from it so uh that's gonna be interesting to follow for sure all right, moving on to the defense, and uh, this is a group that really hasn't changed a lot uh, since the end of the season, although, you know, they did, Jacob Chickren's going to have his full first full season as a senator after being added from the Arizona Coyotes. Um, start with you, Jacob, what do you think about this group? Uh, are they strong enough for a playoff push? Uh, any question marks you have uh, going in? The biggest question mark is health. I think if you get 82 games out of the six guys projected to start, then it's more. The, it's one of the better defensive groups in the league, um, it, like especially with Shabbat, Chikrin, and Sanderson. Mm -hmm. Like those are three high quality defensemen. Uh, Jake Sanderson is going to have a big jump this year. He he was fantastic at both ends of the ice in his first year. So it, like I have no doubts about the quality of these defensemen. It's a matter of a can they stay healthy and b how are the defensive systems going to support them? Because mm -hmm. we know over the past few years, DJ Smith and the defensive system has not worked too well. Um, he didn't have the greatest players, but it just wasn't. Defense has always been a team issue under DJ Smith. So that needs to change this year. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. Paul, what do you think uh, about the defense going into this season? Uh, are they a good group uh, for this for a playoff push or are you still have some question marks about it? I call them adequate, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not, there's nothing that jumps up. There's nothing like uh, 
an Ekblad uh, that jumps of that caliber that mm -hmm. that jumps up. Uh, Chikrin, I think Jacob's right. Uh, questions around his health. Um, I guess in in terms of uh, storylines, I'd be interested to see. Uh, I've been watching um, Tyler Cleveland mm -hmm. and. Know, could he make uh, the roster spot? Depends on whether he has a good camp mm -hmm. to do it. He's probably got to knock off Travis Hammernick, Hammernick, yeah. uh, and beat out uh, Jacob Bernard, Doctor Docker, JBD. Um, don't know if you're if you're Dorian. That's risky because you got to mm -hmm. put those guys have to clear waivers, right? So yeah. But if he got the right camp, uh, I think he could turn some heads. He he might break through the defense. But you know, I don't. I don't uh, there's no burning. They're 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 adequate cup run. Eh. No. <laughs> you know, when I look at uh, the size, I don't think they're big enough all across mm -hmm. the roster. Um, you know, not not in the same sense that uh, the Golden Knights were, but. Mm. You know, I don't. I don't think it's a problem for them. Yeah, I think they're. I think they're a pretty well-rounded group. Like, like you say, they're not. Uh, I mean, Thomas Shabbat, not a bad defenseman, but he's not in that. He's not in the elite elite realm. Um, but he is probably a, a top defenseman on a lot of teams. Uh, sure. But yeah, it, it's going to be interesting to see how this group kind of does uh, this season for sure. Yeah. Moving on, last line of defense. And this is where more changes. Again, Cam Talbot came in last season as a new goaltender. We got a new one again, and that's Jonas Corposalo uh, and Anton Forsberg, who hopefully is healthy after some a really bad injury to both his knees, uh, which is uh, something we've talked about on the show already. Um, but uh, start with you, Paula. What do you think about this goaltending? I know you you have question marks already about Corposalo. Uh, is this yeah. group, is this tandem good enough? Well, I mean, uh, if, if Corpus Allo can live up to, to his hype surrounding the signing and, and Forsberg can stay healthy, then I think it's adequate. Um, I was reading a piece, uh, I forget who, uh, anyway, the statistic quoted was, I think it's from Hockey Reference, was that if I got this right, 13 of the 15 teams with a 900 save percentage, 13 of 15 with that 900 save percentage last year, made the playoffs. So I guess that's that's a stat that I'm going to be working. Mm. You know, look, are these guys at 900? I think individually they've, they've exceeded that, mm. but then. You know, neither's really been a, a bona fide uh, starting goaltender, you know. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have goaltending, and if the Sens don't get that, um, I can't well, – well, <laughs> I can't playoffs, and if they don't make the playoffs, uh, like this year it's playoffs or bust. That's that's the thing for a whole yeah. lot of hits. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of changes, I think, in the offseason next year. If that doesn't happen, I think – I. Jacob, what do you think about this goaltending tandem going in? Like I said, another new one. Um, everyone thought Talbot was going to be the answer, but to end up not being, what do you think about the new face in town in Corpus Allo? I have a lot more faith in Corpus Allo than I did Talbot. Um, I, like, I'll admit it, I was excited about Talbot. He's coming off an all-star season. Um, but I, I do have more faith in Corpus Allo. He's a lot younger. Yeah. He He's coming off a really good season. Um, obviously, so is Talbot. Um, but he's shown the ability to to be able to do this. Like it's not just he, he his numbers weren't fantastic before, but it's not like this season was just a one off last year. Mm -hmm. um, but he's a lot younger, like I said, and he has more in the tank than Talbot. Talbot was on his way down. Um, and as for Forsberg, like people forget that he put up such a great season on a not so good Senators team <laughs> and earned that three year deal. So. I really think that this tandem, like like we've talked about, if they can stay healthy, which seems to be a, quite an issue in Ottawa, um, but this this tandem, if they are playing good hockey by their standards, not necessarily average, not necessarily great, but good by their standards. So if they can both hit around nine oh seven to nine ten, that's that, that's perfect and pretty reasonable. They're not going to be nine fifteen, nine twenty goalies. Like they're not going to win the Vesna, uh, but anywhere from Anything above 905 will be a successful season from them. And it's entirely possible, especially with Ottawa's defense tightening up. 
Yeah, I yeah. Agree with that. Go ahead, Matthew. Yeah, no, go ahead, Paul. Yeah. No, well, I was just going to echo, uh, build on that, uh, what Jacob just said. Um, you know, uh, Corpus Allo had good number, reasonable numbers in playing uh, back, backstopping a terrible defense mm. in, uh, in Columbus. So, yeah. hey, you know what? You got a respectable decor up there in front of you with Ottawa. So let's see what he can do, um, yeah. you know. Hopefully for the senators, um, you know he'll uh, he'll improve on those numbers. But you know he's he's been inconsistent. That, yeah. That's the problem. So, yeah, he's got to stay consistent for sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now we've talked about the three position groups. Let's talk about the team as a whole and in this ridiculously competitive Atlantic Division uh, with a lot of good teams already. I mean, we know the good teams at the top. We. And those teams that are coming up behind them, the you know Buffalo Sabers, Detroit Red Wings, uh, Jacob, what do you think? How do they stack up to the rest of this division and the overall conference now with um, their additions, um, just the improvements they've made in the offseason? I definitely think the wild card hunt is perfectly reasonable. Uh, there's definitely a chance that they can slide into a Atlantic Division spot as well, uh, anywhere from second or third, depending on how you feel about Florida. Um, anywhere from third to seventh is up in the air in the Atlantic. Everybody expects Buffalo, Ottawa to take those next steps. Detroit's right there too. Yeah. Some people don't feel as strong about what Detroit's built, um, but they're all like right there, ready to take those spots from Tampa, Boston, um, not necessarily Toronto yet, but maybe even Florida. They're going to struggle mm-hmm. out of the gate. They have some big injuries. So like the Atlantic Division is such a toss-up, other than first and eighth, which will be Toronto and Montreal. Um, and even even Montreal might surprise some people yeah. like they don't have a terrible roster. Um, so I, I do think that playoffs is entirely possible. Um, and they're right in that mix as well with like Pittsburgh, who's going to be challenging for that wild card in the Metro. Yeah. Um, and, and it's all going to come down to and I hate to bring it up again, but health like <laughs> yeah. which, which can say the healthiest because a couple injuries like Josh Norris will derail an entire season like Shane Pinto did not fit in that second line spot. And that. Yeah. It didn't cost them the whole season, but it was a pretty big factor. So, yeah, for sure, health is uh, is going to be something that's going to be watching for sure. All right, Paul, what do you think uh, about Ottawa's chances in this division in the conference? How do they stack up? Yeah, well, I agree with Jacob. It, it's it's possible that they could make the playoffs, right? But they're going to be in tough to do it. And I frankly don't think I think the only way that they're going to make the playoffs is through a wild card spot. Mm. Um, the reason I'm saying that, um, you know, to make the playoffs in this league, you need to be six a 600 club. That is as as your um, uh, points percentage. Yeah. Sends last year at 525. To make a wild card spot, you know, I was just looking at the stats earlier this afternoon, you've got to be about 560. That's where the Panthers were. So they've got some work to do. And, you know, when I look at teams that are likely to contend for the Stanley Cup, um, Toronto and Tampa Bay, they're mentioned by pundits. uh, They're out of the Atlantic Division. And for making the playoffs, okay, you got Florida and Boston. Now, you can say Boston's all depleted. I don't believe that. They're still the Boston Bruins. So if you go Toronto, Tampa, Florida for the top three, then you're fighting for a wild card. And guess who you're fighting against? Buffalo and Detroit. And Buffalo's no slouch. Yeah. So there's not a lot of room for error here with the Senators. And, you know, some of the press I'm reading, it's it, it almost seems like people think they're a lock on a playoff spot. They they, they better make the playoffs. There's some heads are. <laughs> but uh, I don't think it's, it's going to be tough. Yeah, especially like just coming out of this division, I I do agree. I think it's a wild card spot. They do make it, and mm-hmm. it's going to be tough right to the end because uh, I think those playoff spots are going to be right to the last day of the season. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, let's get to our fun segment and the quick fire round. And I'm just going to throw a few really quick questions. I I mean I love all these questions. That's why I made them up. Uh, all right, I'll start with you, Paul. In this first one. One or two breakout stars for the Senators this season. Well, 
I got to say Ridley Grieg and uh, Igor Sokolov. I mean, I, working with a skating coach, uh, so, you know, it's make or break for him. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, so club have to make the roster first, and <laughs> we'll see. All right, Jacob, what do you think? I'm sticking with my guy up front, Yuri Smiko. I think him coming over from Europe, I think he's going to have a really big year. Uh, he like You hear from his coach on some interviews online that he's done some fantastic stuff. He's ready to come to the NHL, and he's ready to make an impact. So mm-hmm. I'm going to go with him. I hope I'm going to bank on him making the third line with Kubelik and Pinto and making a big impact. All right, it's a good one. All right, we'll stay with you, Jacob. But one player needs to bounce back. Matthew Joseph, assuming assuming he sticks around, he did not have a good year last year. He only had three goals in I think it was fifty two games. None of them were at even strength. It's he he just he needs to be better. He was fine defensively, which is what he's known for. Um, so if he wants to stick around on the team, he needs to be better. Yeah, that's a good one. Paul, what do you think a uh, bounce back player for this season? Yeah, it'd be controversial, but I, I don't know, bounce back, but I think uh, Thomas Shabbat. I mean, he he disappointed last year. He's on defense, and there's a whole bunch of reasons you can you can give for why he wasn't living up to the hype, what was expected. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, this year, hey, you've got a stronger decor. Uh, you won't be playing the minutes, presumably, that you were. So we should expect to see an improvement from him. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, especially with Chikrin taking a bunch more minutes and uh, maybe he will be better without getting that many for sure. Okay, uh, Paul, will stick with you. Uh, one player could be an X factor. Actually, could may not be a player. It could be a situation. It could be the power play, but something that could be an X factor this season. Yeah, I thought about this, an X factor. Um <laughs> I got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, over to you, Jacob. What do you think? Uh, Josh Norris, if he um, if he can get back to that 35 goal pace and 65, 70 points and really solidify that second line center spot because that's something that was really missing. I already talked about that. Like, Sean mm-hmm. Pinto scored 20 goals last year. I think eight of them were in the first, like, 13 games. Like, mm-hmm. he scored a ton of goals right out of the gate. Um, and for the rest of the season, he just didn't fit on that second line. So Josh Norris staying on that second line and really getting more offense. The the top six was fine last year. That wasn't the issue for the team, but mm. that will really solidify and help them get to the playoffs this year. For sure. He he definitely has that ability and he's still only 24. So <laughs> lots, lots of tons of potential still with him. Okay. Well, Sticking, let's go with some rookies and prospects and uh, go to you, Paul. A rookie or a prospect that could surprise make the roster out of training camp? I'm, I'm going to put my money on uh, Cleveland, Tyler Cleveland. Mm. You know, I was watching some clips of him. He's a great, big, physical guy. He's ready to uh, make the NHL. So if he comes in with a determined and a mean streak in, in camp, he we'll turn some heads and Hey, there may be some defensemen that need to be worried about their job. Mm -hmm. We could definitely take over a Hamannix because that Hamannix job is usually physical uh, presence. So yeah, for sure. Jacob, what do you think a rookie or prospect can make the roster out of training camp? Uh, I'm going to go with Angus Crookshank. Um, Mm -hmm. And in that fourth line left wing spot, there's again, half a dozen people that could play for that spot in training camp. But Angus Crookshank, he brings the energy, he brings the speed. Um, he just brings that kind of tenacity. He's not like, not in the same way Ridley, Greg, and Brady Kachuk mm. do, but he's just like, he's not afraid to get in the corners and kind of get under your skin a little bit. He He's such a fun guy to watch too. Um, and he can bring some of that offense the bottom six needs that Parker Kelly can't bring, Zach McEwen can bring, but maybe isn't his specialty for sure. Um, but yeah, I think Angus Crookshank has a good good shot at it. Yeah, I, we talked about him on the roundtable too. So uh, let's keep an eye out for him for sure. All right back to you, Paul. A prospect that we should be watching. Uh, out, it's just in the system. Doesn't have to make the NHL this season, but uh, someone that we should be watching uh, next season or this season. Uh, well, hey, look, we may see him this year, but uh, Robbie Arventi. Yeah. You know, um, Got to watch him. I think he could surprise. And I go back to Igor Sokolov, you know, he just, 
And he's been frustrating. He's been down there in the AHL, but he's been dominant in the yeah. AHL. You know, with his points, he brings size and physicality to the offense. He's got to make it this year. I don't know what to do with him. <laughs> so, you know, with his 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 he's got to know his backs against the wall. So I'm expecting, you know, a good camp. It's it's make the team or bust mm-hmm. this year. Um, so yeah, I'd say watch him. You know, him All and right. Sounds good. All right, Jacob, what do you think of prospect to watch? Uh, I'm a huge fan of Zach Ostopchuk, um and what he did in the WHL last year. Like he tore up that league. He got acquired yeah. by the um, Winnipeg Ice, who went on a on a great run. They had a stacked team, and that bumped him down to. I think he played most of his time with the Ice on the second line right wing spot. Um, but he he's a centerman. He's going to be a centerman in the Ottawa organization. Um, and so watching him this year is going to be it, it's going to be fun. He's going to do good wherever he ends up playing. Probably in Belleville. Um, I think that's the plan. So. I do think that Ostopchuk is going to be one of the more promising prospects at the end of this season and will get a lot more hype now that he's in Ontario. Yeah, I like Ostopchuk. He was in Vancouver uh, and yep. watched him quite a bit. So I, I really like him too. Okay, this one's an easy, well, not an easy one, but a quick one. I, Paul, what do you, who, who is going to lead the forwards in scoring and defense in scoring? Spitzla. And Shabbat. That's where I put my Yeah, mind. pretty easy. <laughs> Those two easy ones. Uh, Jacob, what do you think? I'm going to go Stutzel. And just to be a little bit different, I'm going to go Chikrin. Um, and again, health is always the biggest factor, especially with a guy like Chikrin who's missed so much time. But like the way he can score goals is incredible. So, yeah, and Chikrin definitely has that ability to, to lead the defense in scoring. So it'd be between those two, uh, I think, yeah. for sure. Okay, uh, a player that could be traded by the deadline. We'll start with you, Paul. Who could be traded? You know what? I I, I saw this question was going to come up, and and I really racked my brain on it. Again, I got nothing. But <laughs> you know, there's so many things that could happen. You know, in terms of a blockbuster trade that that the Sens think they need to make, yeah. and God knows who could be part of that, right? Um, so, yeah, nobody stands out as, uh, for me, at least, is a guy you just got to get rid of and, and trade him. So, and, and that's that's all I got, Matthew. <laughs> all right. Jacob, what do you think? Who's getting traded? Well, see, and when everybody's talking about trades right now, it's all about cap space that they need before the yeah. season. So this this is what makes it a little tricky because I don't expect them to go into the season with Matthew Joseph. I think he's mm-hmm. getting dealt um, to make room for Pinto. So during the season at the trade deadline, I'm going to go – and this might be a hot take, but Dominic <laughs> Kubelik, if he doesn't have a great year, he mm-hmm. only has one year left on his deal. He's making not much money. If Ottawa's outside of the playoff race, Kubelik could definitely be shipped to a team like Vegas or Colorado yeah. or because like on such a cheap deal for these cap strap teams, he's going to bring a lot of value. And Ottawa could, if they're out of the playoff race, it's not like they're taking a big chunk of their, like trading Kubelik isn't going to get rid of your entire playoff hopes. No. But and especially if some of these younger guys battling for bottom six spots show that they can take that spot, he's expendable. Um, and obviously I'm rooting for him to succeed in Ottawa, but just to answer your question. <laughs> no, it, it definitely is a possibility because Kubli could fetch something at the deadline uh, for a team that needs some offense. So um, definitely a possibility for sure. Yeah. I okay. mean, uh... You know, on that, it, it, like leading up, I was thinking of right up to the trade deadline in February. And, uh, but, you know, before that, I agree with Jacob, could be uh, Joseph to sign yeah. Pinto. Here's a thought. Maybe you sign Pinto and you trade him. Mm. So just <laughs> that, because if you can't get him a deal that he wants, he's not satisfied, then, hey, you better trade him because, you know, as a restricted free agent, he's, it's not going to be worth True. much. Yeah, yeah, that that's a possibility. Okay, well, you mentioned hot take. This is our last question. Bold prediction or hot take? And we'll start with you, uh, Jacob. What do you think? Stutzel scores 50. I know in our roundtable, I said that <laughs> Kachuk is going to lead the team in goals, um, and I'm still going to stick by that. But for a hot take or a bold take, I'm going to say Stutzel scores 50. He scored 39 last year in 78 games. Um, he's he, he's going to be 21 for the most of this season. 
Like that's he's incredibly young. He's still got another yeah. step to take in him. I think that he can get eleven more goals. Oh yeah, I, I think so too. I I Stutzla definitely has the talent, and if he gels with Tarasenko, yeah, I, yeah, it, it could happen for sure. All right, Paul, uh, you got a bold prediction or a hot take? Senators make the playoffs and they win a playoff round. They go to the second round. There we go. It's a good one. <laughs> That's a good bold prediction for sure. Okay, I thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Paul Jacob for coming on the show and uh, previewing the Ottawa Senators uh, season. And we'll see what happens. This this team's a very interesting one to watch. Uh, lots of talent. Um, just watching Stutzla uh, is something to to watch this team for. So um, it's going to be interesting to watch where where this all goes, how they do throughout the season, and we'll have you guys back on roundtables throughout to kind of talk about it. But uh, before we leave, I go to you uh, first, Paul. Uh, where can everyone find your writing and uh, social media, whatever you want to want to plug here? Um, well, you can find my writing, of course, at the Hockey Writers. I've been there for a couple of years. Uh, just love pumping out stuff that I like to write. And um, <laughs> uh, and uh, if you're any of you are on um, Twitter or X, whatever it's called now, it's <laughs> at P Quinney. All right. Make sure you're following Paul uh, for all that his articles and and takes throughout the season. And Jacob, but where can everyone find your stuff? Yeah, uh, at thehockeywriters.com and on x i guess uh at, <laughs> it's at jacob billing 10 and on the hockey writers tiktok come check it out make sure you subscribe and like to that so all right on that note make sure you're subscribing and liking the youtube channel as well uh you know if you want to watch all the preview shows we keep coming out with uh you can do that at the hockey writers uh youtube channel give us yeah give us a like subscribe to the channel if you haven't already I uh, just throw those comments in the bot, you know, below, and you can answer all those quick bar questions we just did uh, yourself and, uh, you know, and just give us your comments and then uh, make sure you're checking out the hockey for all, all Jacob and Paul's writing and from the rest of the senators uh, writing crew there and all of our preview posts that we have throughout the season. Cause there's, there's quite a bit going on uh, for preview articles and, and stuff like that. So make sure you're checking that out. The hockey writers, and uh, keep following us uh, as we keep doing these preview shows. Uh, we're, we're rolling out almost one for every team. Hopefully we'll have them all out before the season starts. And uh, until next time, we'll see you on another episode of the Hockey Writers Roundtable season preview shows.